I started making content about 5 years ago and back then the iPhone used to be a pretty big deal. I mean what it had to offer back then I don't think any other smartphone manufacturer came close to matching that. The sad part however is that back then I couldn't afford one and now that I can actually afford a pro iPhone uh, it's not that groundbreaking anymore but it is still one of the best smartphones money can buy. Okay, so for the last one month while your feed was getting filled with iPhone reviews, drop tests and battery tests, I was waiting for my iPhone to come. And after 29 long days, it finally came. And the best part about it is that even though the phone was delayed, the main feature that sets apart this year's iPhone hasn't arrived yet. Apple Intelligence So as you all know, there is not much new with this phone this year, if you own a 14 or a 15 Pro you should definitely skip this one. But for a person who is coming from the iPhone 13, this is a significant upgrade. This year the Pro Max is a huge 6.9 inches which feels really massive in my hands. The first thing I noticed about the 16 Pro Max was the slim bezels which are massive on the 13. The 120Hz refresh rate does make a difference. It really makes the user experience much better. After using it for a while now, I don't think I'll ever go back. The dynamic island hasn't been much utilized in my opinion. It has some functions though like uh, showing the charging animations and all but my eye started ignoring it after using the phone for a while. So there are two more buttons on the 16 Pro Max compared to the 13. One of them is the action button which I am going to use it as a silent button and then there is the camera control button. Okay, I don't like it. In no way does it make the photo taking experience better. Uh, rather it does make it a little worse. <laughs> Let me tell you what I mean. Opening the camera app, you can see all the settings that are in your reach. You have to use all your fingers but you get full reachability of all the controls. But that's not the case with the camera control button. First of all, the placement is very wrong. You can't reach it easily whether you are taking photos in portrait mode or landscape mode. I think that uh, the reachability of the camera control button may be an issue with the bigger models like the 16 Pro Max and the 16 Plus. However, it might not be that annoying in the smaller versions like the regular 16 and the 16 Pro. Keeping that aside, while you take a picture using the camera control button, you will always shake your phone while taking a picture, which is not good when you are uh, using the 5X or maybe even the 2X zoom. And navigating through the camera control button to get to individual settings is not a great experience in my opinion. When you open the camera app, you can see all the individual settings that you can go and change. But in the camera control button, you have to find individual settings and then change it. Do let me know in the comments which one you think is the easier way. The camera control button is the first of its kind and it is probably going to be the last of its kind as well. Okay, now let's talk about the main feature of this phone, the cameras. So compared to the 13, the iPhone 16 Pro Max has three cameras. Both the wide and the ultra wide cameras are 48 megapixel this year. And the third lens that the iPhone 13 doesn't have is a telephoto lens, which lets you zoom up to 120 millimeters. I can literally feel the difference in the quality of the pictures taken on an iPhone 13 and the 16 Pro Max. The bigger sensor does take better images with less noise. The 16 Pro Max also features a LiDAR sensor, which improves the photos taken in portrait mode. So as you can see, there are three lenses, but you can choose between five focal lenses to shoot from. This is possible because of the telephoto lens. A small tip for the photographers out there, if you are taking photos through the telephoto lens, I'd suggest you stick to the preset focal lengths of 24, 28, 35, 48 and 120mm. Because at those focal lengths, the camera is zooming optically. But anything between that, the camera will just digitally add the zoom, which is not ideal. So keep that in mind next time you are using the telephoto lens. So this year we got an upgraded list of photographic styles as well. Now you can manually adjust the settings of a particular photographic style and make it look as per your needs. I personally haven't used the photographic styles in my iPhone 13 as well. I just don't like the concept. Uh, if I want to edit the photo, I just uh, use Lightroom Mobile for that. Which in my opinion does a better job. Shooting videos on the 16 Pro Max has been a mixed experience for me. Let me tell you why. The videos that it produces are extremely good. The 4K 120fps videos look absolutely beautiful when slowed. But the problem comes when I try to shoot it in log. So first of all, the sizes of these log files are extremely big. And Apple doesn't let you shoot anything above 4K 30fps without an SSD. 
and even after using an ssd you don't get the manual controls so for that you have to use the black magic camera here comes a problem whenever i try to use a black magic camera and shoot it using an external ssd i get all these frame drop alerts and the video just freezes i have i've tried all sorts of cables and i've still not figured out what the problem is if i shoot and store the files in the iphone itself i face no issues but then i had i'd have to shift it to an ssd and then to my pc which does mess up my workflow so i don't think i'll be using the lock feature unless i find a proper way to record it and find a workflow that works for me uh, keeping that aside i did shoot some videos using the iphone and then i took it to davinci resolve to color grade it and i have to say that the files that come out of this are extremely good <laughs> even my main camera the sony a6400 cannot do it shooting at 120 frames per second and then slowing it down makes the footage look like butter the 16 pro max can easily replace some beginner level mirrorless cameras out there even the normal regular videos that are taken from this smartphone are some of the best that i've seen any smartphone being able to take i plan on using the 16 pro max as a second shooter next to my a6400 and after seeing the results that it can produce, I can guarantee that I'll definitely be making content with the 16 Pro Max. One thing that I just noticed is that the 16 Pro Max and the Apple Pencil are almost the same size. I just noticed it and it blew my mind. I mean, I'm not the only one that noticed it. I think Apple knows this pretty well. I don't know, uh, down the line maybe we can get a iPhone with a stylus. Uh, just speculation so yeah that was my review for the iphone 16 pro max i'm going to make some more videos around the iphone 16 pro max about its photo and video taking capabilities so if you want to check that out uh, do subscribe so that you don't miss the videos and uh, thanks for watching it till the end and i'll see you in the next one